students, I believe. Okay, thank you very much for having me. Uh, I'm very uh, thankful and blessed uh, to be here today, very nervous to speak. Okay, back to your question, uh, Sister Sauha. When you uh, mentioned about uh, economics and also mental health, right? Okay, when we talk about economics, uh, a large part of economics, it involves money, right? So uh, when we talk about mental health, well, uh, I believe, okay, I am, not, uh, I, I am not the person to actually speak about mental health because that is not my area of expertise, but I am more of a finance uh, background person. So I will, uh, I will link uh, both mental health and also finance, okay? So when we talk about uh, mental issues, right? Okay, there are many different types of mental disorders, I believe. Okay, we have, uh, from what I understand, from my very minimal understanding, we have uh, depression, we have stress, we have anxiety disorders, we have even personality disorders and many different types of disorders, okay? So there are many different types of mental issues, but okay, what I can say is the number one stressor of all, what are the main cause? What are the main cause for most of these mental issues is largely it involves around money, okay? And this has been proven, yeah? Uh, that the most common type of stress or the most common type of mental issue is actually financial stress. And uh, according to a data from the American Psychological Association, it shows that money is the number one stressor for Americans. Okay, We, we use Americans as our base here. So regardless of the economic climate, uh, whether the economy is doing well or whether the economy is not doing well, money and finances have remained to be the top stressor since, our, uh, since the survey began from the year 2007. So when we say regardless of the economic climate here, we are, we, we are talking about economies which were uh, during the good times and even the bad times. So, so you just imagine even the good times, money is still one of the main stressor for the Americans what else during the pandemic right now? now the, the pandemic right now has surely uh, caused our mental health to be worsened because of our financial condition. So uh, I just want to give a brief uh, introduction or a brief understanding about what is financial stress, okay? Basically, financial stress, okay, the stress that is one of the main stress problem among people is financial stress. Okay, what is financial stress? Okay, it's actually stress that a person has in relation to money, any money related matters, whether you are uh, having debts, okay, whether you are living beyond your means, or whether you are experiencing losses of job, especially during the pandemic right now. But what I can say right now, uh, Sister Sawha, the good thing is we are not alone. Okay, because of the pandemic, most people are experiencing the same thing. So the, the good thing is we are not alone and together we can work, especially during this event today, together we can, we can discuss how we can actually overcome this financial stress to have a better life, inshallah. That's all for me. Okay, thank you, Sister Shavana. So what I can conclude from what Sister Shavana said is that it is proven that the most common type of stress that people are having right now, uh, even though uh, the economy is good or bad, is the financial stress. So if in the normal days, uh, financial stress is the common uh, problem, what, what more now when the pen, uh, we are experiencing a very big economic downturn? So thank you so much, Sister Shavana. Uh, I will get to Tista No Adila. What do you think? is the link between uh, mental health and economy, in your opinion. Yeah, so bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, first of all, thank you so much, Amsas, uh, Sister Sawha, for inviting me. Um, the other day, Brother Yusuf texted me about the invitation to attend this forum as one of the panelists. And I asked, I remember I asked him, okay, berapa lama? Dua jam. So, ah, oh, dua jam, apa aku nak cakap ni? Apa aku nak baby ni sebenarnya? So, okay, basically, uh, come back to the question. Um, okay, yes. Um, like Sister Shabana had just mentioned before, um, COVID-19 has affected us in so many ways. Financially, physically, emotionally, macam-macam. Macam-macam cara, macam-macam orang kata corner, 
Okay, but um, the thing that I would like to share with you guys, the first thing first, if you have to understand what's the what is the meaning of mental health itself first. Okay, so for example, I just want to share with you the definition of mental health in layman words lah. Uh, tak adalah macam orang kata tak ingat words, macam ni literally macam ni tak. So, roughly or generally, mental health is actually similar to physical health. You know, sometimes we, we have fever, sometimes we are coughing, you know, we have cough, kita ada flu, macam-macam. Okay, same goes with mental health. It can happen to anyone. Okay, even though you tak ada stressor pun, okay, you don't you don't feel any stresses all, uh, around you, but sometimes you feel that your mental health has been affected by so many things around you. Okay, but when we are talking about mental illness, I do like it. That's a different definition from mental health. Okay, but mental illness is like um, someone who has been diagnosed with mental illnesses. Uh, like uh, Sister Shabana has just mentioned before. Okay, macam like depression, anxiety, itu lebih kepada mental illnesses. Okay, so um, apa orang kata, apa-apa pun, we have to look at the cause of the issue. Okay, now when we're talking about mental health, Okay, and our topic today is about uh, economy, about finance, okay, about money. Okay, yes, uh, orang kata straight to the point memang memang affected lah. But I just want to bring you guys to understand the whole situation first. Okay, now, have you heard about Befrienders before? Pernah dengar tak? Befrienders. So, pernah dengar tak? Okay, kalau saya siapa nak nak chat, nak apa ni, nak borak-borak kat chat box pun boleh tak ada masalah. Okay, so Befrienders is actually one of the NGOs who is responsible to cater uh, or cater Malaysians uh, concerns on mental health related issues. Okay, contohlah, tiba kan hal-hal hal rasa macam, wah oh, stress gila lah, exam banyak sangat, break diri. You know, banyak benda nak kena buat. Okay, and then you find out, ah, oh, I don't know who can I talk with. Who can I talk to? You know, you don't, you cannot Alah, kalau kacau kawan nanti kacau exam dia juga uh, You know, alamak kalau kalau call mak nanti Mak akan kata, mak akan risau pula You know, that kind of concern So you don't you don't have anywhere to share about your thoughts About your feelings So selalunya orang akan opt for befrienders lah Okay, so one of the survey done by befrienders They mentioned that they, they did a survey on uh, apa orang kata mental, mental health related issues lah and then they compare between 2020 and 20, uh, 20, sorry, 2020 and 2021 okay so they compare between these two years kan waktu ni kan pandemic kan okay for your information the callers meaning that those who are seeking for professional help is increasing uh, agak-agak siapa boleh teka berapa persen Naik tu daripada tahun lepas dengan tahun ni uh, Kalau siapa boleh jawab Exactly the number akan boleh bagi grab voucher uh, So ni boleh claim nanti Okay Siapa boleh teka Akan open dekat chat box Tak ada masalah Teka je So berapa persen Kenaikan sebenarnya callers Daripada 2020 sampai 2021 Siapa boleh jawab I think I can give one minute to the audiences Okay. Anyone can, okay, anyone can answer the question. Yeah. So I did not say something, right? It's along the way, lah. Along the way, okay. Some, some, okay. Lah. okay. So just okay. an increase in terms of the percentage, meaning that people are aware of their own mental health conditions. Okay. People are aware that oh, okay, I really need someone to talk to. I really need professional help, which is indirectly, kalau kita tengok, is very good um sign. Okay, meaning that people started to aware. Uh, tapi kalau if we look at the other side of it, kita akan nampak, Ya Allah, sekarang ni macam makin ramai ke orang is having this kind of mental health related issues. Okay, alright. Now, itu akan cakap pasal resi callers, meaning the numbers of those who are seeking for help. Okay, what about the reasons of them looking for professional help? Kenapa? Kenapa sebenarnya orang call ni? Saya saja ke? Okay, so um, Befrienders also um, did a survey on this and they identified there are five, um, I would say, reasons why people seek 
for their help. Okay, so the first one is related to relationship. Okay, um, uh, I still remember uh, last year, kan UAE ada buat survey kan? UAE did a survey on the, apa orang kata, sama ada nak hantar sudah balik rumah ataupun nak, nak stay. Okay, and uh, for your information, there are quite a lot of students decided to stay in Mahallah. Okay, so we we you know we're wondering lah. Eh, kita boleh nak balik. Kita kan boleh bagi balik. Kita boleh hantar, kan? But then they decided not to go to their home. They want to stay in Mahallah. Okay, so after a few discussion with them, da 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 da, and we found out that um there are some financial and pro family problem, family issues back in their hometown. So this they decided to stay in Mahalla. Okay, so that one is one of the reason why people are seeking for help. Second one is because of psychological issues, you know, like uh, Sister Shabana mentioned before, anxiety, depression, stress. Okay, that's uh, the main concern. The third one is about family issues. Okay, if we look at the family issues, kalau kita betul-betul faham kenapa terjadi ni family issue ni, kita kena tengok sama ada ayah dia bekerja ataupun tidak. Okay, so that is related with economy. Uh, okay, for your information about, kalau tak silap akak lah kan, about 40% of our, um, apa orang kata ni, um, company is straight, apa, retrenching tau. Maksudnya, they are offering for VSS for some of their employees. Okay, say for example, contohlah, you baru kerja lima tahun, sepuluh tahun, but then you are offered for VSS. Uh, berapa banyaklah sangat dapat sebab tak, tak, tak orang kata um, experiences tu tak banyak, so VSS pun tak banyaklah sebenarnya. Okay, pendek ceritanya lah macam tu. So, if we dive in into the main issue related to family issues is actually the root cause of it is back to the jobless issue. Okay, diberhentikan kerja, tak dapat disambung contract, you know, this kind of thing. Okay, next one is social problems, so semua itulah. So the fifth one is actually job related issues. Okay, now, aku tak nak bawa you all jauh sangat tau, pergi kepada macam, oh dah lima tahun kerja tak? because you are you are a student kan sekarang ni you masih lagi student so kita tak nak takut-takutkan you all dengan alamak lima tahun nanti apa akan datang tak 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 ada macam tu so um insyaallah throughout our discussion today i will invite you guys to relate to yourself okay what are your preparation for the next step what are your preparation to venture into working world Okay, is there any job demand for your specialization? Uh, okay, because I believe that, okay, kita dah tahu mental health issue ni memang related dengan ekonomi. Okay, tapi apa, what is our initiatives? Okay, so insyaAllah, the things that I will share with you guys today um, is something that I, I believe that this is based on my own experiences, okay, dealing with our students and also based on my engagement with other companies as well. Okay, so awal-awal akan nak buat disclaimer lah. Tak adalah banyak sangat pasal depression, stress, apa semua tak banyak sangat. Tapi it is more on how we can move forward. We already know about the data, we already know about the consequences, but on how we can prepare ourselves for the next step, inshallah. So that's all from me, thank you. All right, thank you, Sister Adila. Okay, before I can conclude what you have said just now, can you look to the chat box section mm -hmm. and see if anyone has the correct answer? Uh, okay, let me see. All right, so the answer is actually 52. So the closest one is... Uh, Ismaili Ismet. Uh, okay, boleh? <laughs> you My <can>. friend. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So you can contact me back. Okay, so I'll give you the voucher. All right, congratulations, Isma. Right, it's all right, I will remind her. Okay, so what I can conclude from Sister Adila's um, talk just now is that 
there are many reasons to seek professional help, right? Uh, for example, relationship, psychology issues, family issues, social problems, and job-related issues. And one of the reasons is family-related issues and why, why people experience uh, that from family related issues is because mainly because if the the parents are working are not working and because of that there's financial stress and how and that is how it is linked to mental health all right thank you sister no adila and sister Shabana. moving on to the next question Oh, we can't hear you, sister. Yeah. Okay, so moving on to the next question. As everyone can clearly see, our current economy is not doing so well. Like um, what of you have elaborated just now and is experiencing a major downturn, especially during this pandemic. And as an effect, not only businesses, uh, but firms, households, students, all of us are facing financial stress. So, Sister Shabana, you have defined the, um, the definition of financial stress. Uh, can you please explain what are the trigger factors that lead to this financial stress, uh, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic? Okay, all right, Ken. Thank you very much, uh, Sister Saha. Okay, basically, right, uh, I would like to highlight two main points here, okay? the two main triggering factors that actually lead to uh, a bigger financial stress, especially during this pandemic. Number one is our lifestyle, okay? Uh, especially for the students, okay? since uh, the majority of the audience here are students, right? It's very important for us to understand that we should not and we should never adopt a superficial lifestyle. Okay, a lifestyle that we want to portray to our friends uh, via the Instagram, uh, via the social media platforms, you know, uh, it's, uh, we see our friends going for holidays, we want to go for holidays, uh, we see our friends uh, wearing branded bags, uh, we want to wear branded bags, you know, it's very important for us to understand that we have to live according to our needs, that's number one, yeah, uh, we have to really uh, uh, try not to uh, adopt a superficial or a lavish lifestyle okay it's very important to live according to our means okay why do i say that i i always like to when i speak i like to use some data as a form of evidence okay by the way uh, Sauha, how long do i have for for me to speak on this particular question um the plan time is 10 minutes okay all right okay so basically okay basically right you see uh the data says, right, almost 65% of Malaysians yeah, that have been identified do not understand what is financial literacy, okay? And because of this, their lack of understanding on what is financial literacy, this has led yeah, to an increased amount of youth, okay? You guys are the youth, right? The increased amount of youth between the age of 25 until 44 to be declared bankrupt. Okay, why are they being declared bankrupt at such a young age? Is because of two very important things. One, excessive personal financing loans. Yeah, and number two is excessive usage of credit card to maintain a certain lifestyle. You keep on borrowing, you keep on using all the loans that you have in the banks, you keep on slashing your credit cards everywhere you go just to maintain a certain lifestyle and then up to a stage where you can't afford to pay anymore. And that is when you are being declared bankrupt. So that is why it's very important for all of us to adopt in our mindset to live within our means. Okay, so back again, you, you guys will be asking me, what is financial literacy? What, what is understand by financial literacy, right? Okay, uh, uh, generally, financial literacy is, me, is meant confident understanding of financial concepts. Okay, you must understand basic financial concepts such as what is savings, what is debt, what is investing, okay, so that we can have an overall sense of a financial well-being and self-trust, okay, in simple terms, okay, what is financial literacy is for us to able to differentiate between what is our material needs 
and what is our material wants. Okay, needs are the things that we must have okay, in order for us to survive. We must have these needs. But wants are more to desirable things, which we can live without it. So it's very important for us, as especially the youth, right? When you, when you graduate from the university, when you start working, it's very important for you to be able to differentiate between what is needs and what is want. Is it a need for you to have a car? Uh, is it a need for you to have a coffee at Starbucks or San Francisco uh, every day before you go to work? It's very important for you to understand because you want to, you want to understand that it's very important to live life without debt. Because debt is a vicious cycle. It will make you become someone who's forever thinking about how to pay your debts, how to pay your debts, and ended up you becoming stressed. And that is a mental health issue, right? So back to how is, okay, when we speak about this, what, is, uh, what are the needs and what are the wants? Okay, how do we identify uh, needs and wants in an Islamic way of understanding? Okay, in Islam itself also, uh, we can identify needs and wants using these three levels of Makasid al-Sharia. That is, uh, you have to identify them first, what are your daruriyat? Okay, these are the things that you must have. For example, uh, to go to office, okay? Uh, how do you go to office? Either you walk, you know, either you take the bus, okay? What's daruriyat? Daruriyat is the basic, you know, you must have this, okay? You go by bus. And then second is, your hajiyat, okay. For example, you have accomplished your daruriyat. These are the basic. Maybe if you can afford for hajiyat, maybe you can go for having a car instead to go to office, okay, because you can afford for hajiyat. And then, uh, if you can afford above hajiyat, then that's when you go to tahsiniyat. That is more to ex uh, uh, extravagant lifestyle because Islam allows us to have a good uh, uh, lifestyle, but if, if we can afford it, Okay, if we can't afford it, then it's not something that you must have. So again, so the first you have is daruriyat, okay, the basic, and then hajiyat, the second level. And then if you can still afford it, you can go to tahsiniyat. For example, then you can afford to buy a branded car, okay, a BMW or Mercedes. But again, it's all within your means. That's very important. We must understand that we should never live our life beyond our means. Okay, so... For all students, okay, for all the students of uh, UIA who are now listening to this, it's very important for you to understand yeah, what is financial literacy. Okay, as a responsible student, before you graduate, before you start working, it's very important for you to know what is financial literacy, how do you plan your budget, how do you ensure what are your needs and what are your wants, so then what are your spending, how do you track your spending, this is very important. Do not live life equal how enough so you should not be doing that you know so that you can you must you must set a plan you must set a plan can when by when you should achieve financial freedom uh, by when you should buy yourself a house you know by when you should get yourself uh, comfortable with all the uh, payments that you or all the debts by when you want, want to settle all your debts it's very important because you don't want to live life like i said with debts okay that's number one. and uh okay I, I still have time right i i still have time uh, yes, right, Rosalie. Right. Okay. So, uh, some will ask, okay, how do you how do you manage your finances? Okay, because we you know we want to see we want to we want to have a lifestyle that's within our means, right? So there are there are many different ways of managing our finances. Okay, there are many different ways, but one of the way that we can adopt is we use a formula. Okay, the formula that I always use for myself is the formula which we call as the 30-10 formula. Okay, what is 30-10 formula? Okay, whatever money that you receive every month, whatever, you know, uh, salary that you receive every month, 30% of your salary must go to savings. Okay, that's very important. And when we speak about savings, what kind of savings? Uh, number one is savings. Okay, number two is investments. Okay, it's very important for all of us to know how to grow our money. Okay, we must, we must find out all the different types of investments available, whether it's gold investments, whether it's Bitcoin, whether it's whatever, cryptocurrency, whatever way. We must find out all the different types of investments. Of course, as a Muslim, it's important for it to be Sharia compliant, right? Because through investments, it can actually help to grow our money, right? So that's how 30% of your salary you put aside for savings, for investments, uh, and also for takaful. It's very important for all of us to have takaful, especially when all of you students are still very young, the premium that you have to pay is still very low. 
Okay, you must have takaful plans for uh, for your retirement. You must have takaful plans if just say you want to pursue your uh, future future studies, your postgraduate studies. You know, uh, accident plans, you know, whatever plans they are, you know, you must take up takaful. Your your health plans, you know, because when you are still young, the premium that you pay is still very low. So it's very important. Thirty thirty percent of your savings you put aside for takaful. You put aside for investments. You put aside for savings, and also you must put aside for emergency funds. Okay, what is emergency funds? Emergency funds is usually funds that inside that emergency funds punya tabung do you have at least six months of your salary so in situations like the pandemic right in situations like the pandemic when you lost your job or you have reduced in salary uh, that is when you can actually use the emergency funds to sustain for the next six months so that is where this 30 percent of your salary should go to another 30 percent of your salary should go to your debts Whatever debts that you have, you must pay using this thirty percent. So this means that you can only borrow up to thirty percent of your salary. You should not borrow more than that because if you borrow more than that, this means you are living beyond your means. Okay, so it's very important for you to only have debts within thirty percent of your salary, and then. Whatever extra that you have, just out of these 30% debts that you have, 30% you, uh, of your salary, you have to pay your debts. Whatever extra you have, then you keep. Just say, you know, of course, being young, one day you want to get married, right? One day you want to buy a car. So you can use this money to save for your wedding expenses, for example. And then another 30%, what we call as uh, perbelanjaan hangus. That's perbelanjaan hangus means it's your expenses for that whole month. For your food, for your transportation, for whatever, because I love coffee, you know. So I'm always talking about coffee. Okay, for your coffee, you know, uh, these are these thirty percent. You must only use thirty percent of your salary for your uh, daily expenses. And being a Muslim, it's very important for us not to forget the other people who are in need, right? Because we always want to have barakah in our rizki. That's very important, right? So that ten percent of your salary must go to sedekah, zakat, or wakaf. So that is how you must you must put your your salary in such a way that you must uh, change your whatever lifestyle that you are having now. If it's a lifestyle that's not within your means, change your your lifestyle. Okay, change your lifestyle. Spend according to your means, and remember always remember never be a slave of money. Instead, make money be your slave. Let money work for you. Not you work morning, day, night, every day. You work, you work just to get money. You don't want to do that. You want money to work for you because you want to attain financial freedom. Always remember, you are only slave to Allah. You are only, uh, you only have to obey the people who feed you. They are your parents. You don't have to care whatever your friends are doing, whatever lifestyle they are having. Everybody has got the pros and cons in life. Everybody has got the goods and the bads in life. You may look, uh, you know, people of a certain way. You don't know what are the things that they are going through. You see, so it's very important. Always remember, make Allah happy, make yourself happy. Never be in debt and change your lifestyle. All right. So then, that's number one. Lifestyle. Lifestyle is very important. Okay, lifestyle is very important. And then for people who have lost of jobs, especially during the pandemics, right? Many people sometimes your salary have to be reduced. Sometimes you have to lose your jobs, right? So this can be a great burden, especially for family who are going through this. You see, and especially for family who do not have sufficient savings. So it's very important. Like I said, is if you don't have the sufficient savings now, it's okay. It's never too late to start, right? You can always start. Start saving. It's very important. Key is whatever you do, always remember reduce spending, increase savings. They always have got this saying, right? If you fail to plan, this means you plan to fail. Okay, and find out all the different types of takaful plans there are, especially for university students. What are the takaful plans that's available? Find out. Find out about all the various ways how you want to keep your budgeting. All these things are important. Yeah, now this you can just download all the various apps, you know, on uh how you can keep your budgeting. They have this my tabung. They have all kinds of apps, you know, uh, in in your handphone. You just download and use them and track your budgeting wisely. Okay, and of course, be uh for me, it's very important to just find out all the financial assistances available out there, especially from the university or from the government. You know, whatever schemes, whatever uh whatever you know financial uh, assistance that you can get as students, go ahead and get it. Okay, it's very important to start saving now so that all of you can have a better future, inshallah.
All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Shivana. Wow, that's, that's a lot that we have learned now, especially for me. I have learned many things new here. So what, what I can conclude is that we always need to live according to our mean, not be influenced by that Instagram influencers wearing that nice t-shirts and all that stuff. Cannot be influenced by that. And one thing that I really like is that when you talk about the 10, 30, 10 formula, that, that would be very useful for all of us right now. Um, what I can conclude is that 30% of the salary will go to the savings, investment, takaful, and emergency funds, in which in the emergency funds, that should be six months of salary. 30% salary will be for our debts. Um, maybe that's for the house loan or uh, for the car loan. Um, 30% more is for the basic expenses for coffee, for tea, for our billing expenses. And 10% more is for the needs of others uh, so that we can be a good Khalifa for Huwa. That is for the Sadaqah and Zakat. Okay, so uh, secondly, you have also mentioned that this is never too late to start saving. If you, if you fail to plan, you will uh, plan to fail. Well, thank you so much, Sister Shabana, for your talk. And now I will get back to Sister No Adila. Sister No Adila, um, do you think that there is any effect of financial stress to one's mental health? I think you already talked about, about this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> this is a bit, um, Okay, yeah. Okay, so, uh, Adina, do you want to explain how, uh, what is the psychology coping strategies for, uh, to handle the financial stress? Okay, all right. Um, just to echo with what Sister Shabana has mentioned before, I just, you know, just recap my my early days, you know. Um, my dad is always was always um a um, always remind us our siblings that you you have to know what are the things which are nice to have and must have. Uh, this is always been my, you know, my princip. Uh, when I go everywhere, okay? even though, Alhamdulillah, and now I already secured my career, okay? Um, and Alhamdulillah, I am very blessed with the things that I have at the moment. But this princip is never been missed. Every time I, walaupun rasa macam, aduh, Shopee ni memang, ya Allah, tempted ya, okay? Tapi still, oh, no, 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 it's just nice. To have nice to have nice must have thing okay that kind of thing lah okay but um before I proceed with the question being asked by Sister Salha, I would like to invite you guys to understand first what could be the cause of the uh, financial issues among students okay because she, Sister Shabana always um already mentioned about when you already have your own income okay those are the things that you need to do. Okay, but if we go back sebelum, sebelum you secure any job, you have to understand what are the platforms that you have to seek for your career. Okay, so you have to bear in mind that um, the most, uh, we have to understand the category of people who are affected because of the economic crisis. Okay, most of them are from B40 category. Okay, so apa masuk B40 tu? Uh, takkan nak bagi quiz lagi. <laughs> Habis duit saya hari ini. <laughs> okay, good answer. Okay, so B40 means uh, family income is below than 5,000 if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so meaning that pukul rata maksudnya, uh, no, no, 4,000, 4,000, sorry. Okay, so meaning that 40% of our populations are a family which has income 4,000 and below. Below eh, bukan above. 
Okay, so meaning that these are the people who are kais pagi makan pagi. Uh, jangan sampai akak nyanyi lagu Andi Bernadi pula. Uh, okay, kais pagi makan pagi. Okay, so meaning that if they couldn't secure or if they couldn't um, what we call as gain something today, they may not be able to eat tomorrow. You know, the kind of thing. Okay, so now I would like to, to bring you guys to understand. Okay, contohlah siapa-siapa yang ada hari ni kan dalam 100 orang yang ada dekat dalam kita Zoom hari ni. Okay, what are the companies or what are the um, sectors that you are really interested to work in? Can you share with me? Boleh chat dekat sini. Say for example, those who are interested to work in government sector, you can write down government sector. Those who are interested to work in private sector, feel free to write private sector. Those who would like to work in NGOs, feel free to do so. Or those who are interested to be um, a, an employer, you would like to have your own uh, company, self-employed, please write it down. I just want to look um, roughly, Jay. You open your preference, don't you mind Okay, so any one of you are interested to work in government sector? Okay, what about private sector? Okay, government sector, government, government, GLC, NGO, government lagi. Ah, uh, lagi? Government sector lagi. Okay, all right, good. Okay, majority will opt for government sector. Why? Okay, because of job security. Okay, so for your information, um, one of the least affected category of people due to pandemic COVID-19 in terms of economic situation, economic crisis is government sector. Uh, sebab tu ramai orang berminat untuk bekerja dekat government sector. Okay, but when I talk about multinational companies, are you guys interested to work in that? Hmm, multinational companies. Okay, I had one session with one of your lecturers previously. Okay, ni? mentioning about um, her difficulties or her challenges to help you guys to look for your internship placement. Okay, and I asked and I asked her, um, doctor, uh, student ni apply kat mana? Okay, so her answer was, Oh, majority diorang memang apply kat government sector. So, oh, no one did lah. Okay. Memang susah lah nak dapat because the demand is not there. Okay. The demand is not there and it's very hard to, for you to secure that, uh, the job placement there. Okay. So, when I give the options because we also do some engagement with other companies as well out there. Okay. So, some of the companies are multinational companies. Okay. So, when we offer that internship opportunity to that students to all the students who haven't secured any job uh, any internship placement and the reaction or the feedback that I got from them was Allah God susah lah multinational companies nanti nak kena cakap English you know nanti nak kena macam susah lah diorang tak 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 confident lah ah that kind of perception because I want you guys to know, to understand that that least affected sector because of economic crisis nowadays in Malaysia is multinational companies. Okay, so meaning that after this, if you already graduated, please look for this opportunity. Okay, bila you dah dah secure your placement there, and then you boleh guna, uh, apa tadi, Sister Syabana dah bagi tahu yang percentage, the principles tu. Okay, the theory itself. Uh, barulah cantik. Uh, tapi kalau if you still looking for a government sector but not much opening available for you, tapi you ambil kerja-kerja contoh dalam 1002, macam mana you nak buat 30%, 10%, you know? Sedekah pun kadang-kadang berkira-kira. Uh, nanti kan? So, itulah. Uh, so, nak dapatkan um, orang kata a sector, a nice pay that you can, you know, um, leverage the thing that's, that you have, please look for multinational companies. Okay, now that, that's the, the uh, to echo with what Sister Shavana has mentioned before. Okay, now, about the psychological effect. Okay, 
ni akan nak tanya lah kan you guys um have you all experienced a day when you only have ten ringgit in your pocket okay but before going to bed okay you just scroll up your instagram account Oh, ya Allah, dia ni sedap je yang makan kat Risha Mo. Oh, ya Allah, salted caramel sedapnya. You know, salted caramel pun dah RM15. Aku ada RM10 je. You know, that kind of, that kind of orang kata competition. That kind of, um, apa orang kata ni? Macam lifestyle. Yang sister Syabana dah mention kan. Okay. This is what we call as indirectly, it will affect your self-esteem. You will feel that you are not competent. You will feel that you are very hopeless. You feel that you are useless. You feel that, oh, I'm not good enough. Okay, this is actually the thing that you choose to think that way. Okay, if you didn't compare yourself to other people's lifestyle, you won't feel that way. You will feel that, okay, I just need um, nasi goreng satu, Air sejuk tak apalah, dah ada air kowe. Itu uh, pun atas ihsan orang, sedekah orang. Okay, you know that kind of thing. Okay, it happened because of you started to compare yourself. Okay, alright. That's number one, self-esteem. self-esteem. It will affect your self-esteem. Second one is that financial situation or economic crisis can affect your relationship as well. How? Okay, say for example, okay, you have a uh, poor income family, um, a family, okay, uh, a husband used to be working previously, okay, and um, young wife dia pula adalah full time housewife, okay, so the breadwinner of the family is that person, the male, okay, the husband itself. Okay, so one day due to pandemic situation, okay, the, the economic crisis, uh, family the, uh, sorry, company to shut down. So he has no way to go. Um, he has no other options. He has so many commitments on on his shoulder. Okay, terlalu banyak fikir anak lagi, taska lagi, okay, susu lagi, pampers lagi, pasu istri pula tak bekerja. No, this kind of thing can also affect relationship issues, relationship situation. How? Because when you feel so stressful, okay, at one point you could not, uh, you you didn't communicate well with your spouse. Okay, you are going stress. At one point you you have the tendency to displace or you have the tendency to, uh, what we call as project your anger your frustration to your family members. Uh, tu yang kadang-kadang tak pasal-pasal anak pun kena. You know, tiba-tiba smallest thing. Smallest thing. Say, say for example, macam lupa tutup lampu. Okay, anak lupa tutup lampu. And then ayah, ayah akan macam, lah abang kenapa tak tutup lampu? Tahu tak bil api ni, no, 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 mahal, macam mana nak bayar, you know that kind of thing. So that is actually can affect your relationship um issue with your family members okay that's number two number three academy uh, sorry financial situations can also affect your routine say for example you are so stressed because you couldn't pay for tuition fees okay walaupun uae ni adalah salah satu university yang agak rendah dari segi fees nya okay somehow we also have students who cannot um couldn't uh, pay for their tuition fees i did okay so it also can affect your interest you feel demotivated to study kan okay, rasa macam no more apa aku belajar ni tapi fikir macam mana aku nak bayar ni alamak malam nak makan apa and some of our students ada yang patahkan meki satu untuk pagi satu untuk malam you know up to that point okay and when we identify this situation because family dia dekat kampung tu tak dapat kerja dah and from B40 category because so this is very apa orang kata sedih lah kan okay? bila kita dengar begini okay so loss of interest could be one of the the effect okay lack of sleep uh, like I mentioned before your mental health related, uh, your mental 
your mental health issues can be related with your physical health. Okay, kalau kita tak cukup tidur, kita sakit kepala, kita akan jadi moody, kita akan menjadi stress. Okay, loss of focus. And also, this is very interesting. Eating habit. Dia akan berubah. It's either you akan makan lagi banyak ataupun you akan makin kurang makan. Ha, siapa yang contoh kan? Kadang-kadang tengah borak-borak, dia tiba kawan makan coklat. Eh, kau makan coklat banyak sangat ni kenapa? Aku stress, aku stress. Mana kat beri tadi? Aku stress, aku stress. Mana bagi share sikit. You know, kadang-kadang orang stress makan banyak coklat. Nah, it is not a good eating behavior. Okay? Ha, kalau coklat tak apalah. Ni kalau tiba-tiba nak sabak tiap hari sebab, sebab stress, ha, tu dah kembali kepada lifestyle lah. Okay? The next one is unhealthy coping strategies. I think this one I will cover later. Okay, kita baru nak understand the effects of uh, financial crisis. Last but not least is that it could lead to anxiety, depression and also addiction. Okay, kenapa I cakap addiction kat sini? Sebab kadang-kadang um, when we when we really want when we want something really bad, kita akan ada tendency to invest more to that. Contohlah, itu yang buatkan kadang-kadang orang ada ada apa ni tendency untuk berjudi. You know, ada yang contoh gali lubang, tutup lubang. You know, dah pinjam ke orang, nak bayar orang lain punya hutang tu, dia pinjam ke orang lain pula. You know, dia akan jadi addiction tau. Okay, kadang-kadang dia macam tak boleh nak tahan dia punya Uh, addiction to okay and for your information those who are already have this kind of mental illnesses anxiety depression and so on they will feel they will their condition will worsen okay because of the financial crisis okay so kadang-kadang dia rasa macam dah okay tapi because of other people's expectation contohlah kan dia tanya eh kau ni dah dah habis belajar kenapa tak kerja-kerja lagi uh, you know Eh, bukan dah habis belajar ke tahun ni, tahun lepas? Kenapa menganggur lagi? Uh, you know, that can, that can also create anxiety, depression and also addiction. Okay, thank you so much. That's all for me. Alright, thank you so much, Mrs. Adila. First of all, I want to thank you for telling about the multinational company because I am also seeking for internship And I, I was confused of what company I should choose. So I will go towards multinational company now. But thank you so much for that. Um, okay, so what I can conclude for what you have uh, talked just now about the psychological effects, right? First is the self-esteem. Sometimes when we scroll through the social media and we get jealous of our friends and we want to be like them and we, we, we tend to follow them if, even though It, we don't we don't have that money just like what sister Shavana said that we never can go beyond our limit and then um, this uh, these issues can also affect our relationship even just a small thing like you have said that the tutup lampu and then financial situation can affect your routines um, we can give up we can have this thought to give up studies, to give up work and all that stuff. And then it can also affect our eating habits. If me, I can, I, I will eat more, not eat less. I can never, um, I can never leave my eating. And then um, we have talked about the depression, anxieties and addictions. So thank you so much Mr. Adila for this. Okay, so I will get back to Uh, Sister Shabana. So, Sister Shabana, um, how do do we help people with less secure employment, lower education status, and lower income experiencing high rates of mental illness? Can you help to elaborate on that? Hi, uh, sorry, Sister. Can you can you repeat again your question? Okay, how do we help people with less secure unemployment, lower education status, mm -hmm. and lower income experiencing higher rate of mental illness? Higher rate of? Uh, rate of mental illness. Illness. Okay, so basically your question is how do we 
uh, help the lower income people in addressing their mental right yes what you always said okay uh, all right okay for me um uh, when it comes to mental illness, that is not my area of expertise. That would be uh, Sister Adila, I believe, right? But okay, for, for in general, right? For people who are having low income, okay? Uh, okay, this is about motivation, actually, okay? It's all about how we want to improve ourselves. That's very important, okay? We always remember we are the Khalifa of Allah in this world, right? When we come to this world, we wanna when we when we come to this world, we wanna live this world as the best uh, version of ourselves. Okay, we don't wanna live this world uh, being someone who is of a worse version than we are before that. Okay, masa yang kita meninggal dalam kita nak jadi manusia yang paling terbaik dalam hidup kita tu. So it's very important. Okay, whether if you are from the lower income or you do not have money, it's always very important to find ways, right? To find ways to improve yourself. Okay, it's very important to improve yourself. How you want to improve yourself? Now, nowadays, there are many uh, available online courses that you can take up, right? You can take up various uh, diplomas, various additional certificates online because education is lifelong. You know, you must consistently educate yourself. And when you are when you are educating yourself, you will naturally be more confident. Okay, these are all interrelated. Okay, so it's very important to always find ways to improve ourselves, whether it's to uh, you know find all the different types of online courses available, whatever that we can take up, we take up. While working, we take up all these additional courses if there are, you know, so that we can improve ourselves. So then later, when we want to apply for a new job, our new job comes with working experiences as well as uh, additional courses that we have taken. All right, that's how I see. And at the same time, also now, uh, even yesterday when I was speaking, I, I, I always say, you know, even like, for example, last time uh, with mothers, right? Last time mothers or, you know, our women, uh, who have children because all of you, uh, you know students will have children one day inshallah last time uh, they have to choose whether they want to work outside okay and leave their kids at home all right or and uh, or another way is you become a housewife and you do not work but now we should see this life uh, with everything that's virtually as a blessing because now you can earn money, you can earn all kinds of, you can do all kinds of businesses, you can earn all kinds of income through all the social media platform, right? So never, for me, it's, it's always very, uh, like for example, you can do drop shipping, you know, you can sell, uh, you can uh, do uh, home-based cooking, you know, home-based uh, food businesses, you can sell products, you know, all this via online while at home. So for me, there are many ways. The most important is very important for us to change our mindset, to always improve ourselves. Because we live life only once. We live life once. And when we die, we want to be the best version of ourselves. And that how to be the best version of, of ourselves, we improve ourselves every day. And there are many ways that we can improve ourselves through uh, studying, you know, through working, through getting all these various uh, courses, various ways of getting more income. Uh, that's how I see it. All right, thank you, Mr. Shivana. So what I can conclude is that um, the way to, to uh, face this problem is that we need to change our mindset. We have, need to always be ourselves and that can be done by studying and working. So thank you, Mr. Shivana. Um, okay, Sister No Adila, um, as you are more expert in psychological, uh, um, field. Um, this this is a very popular question. It, it we actually have asked the students to um, include their own questions in this um, uh, in the Google form, and this is the most popular question to be asked to you. So the question is that uh, working from home and online classes can increase the risk of working and studying for long hours and burn out managing the balance of work and life. It has been hard for we teenagers juggling with professions and responsibilities along with increased childcare and homeschooling burden. Uh, what as a psychologist, you can share a piece of advice to counter this problem. 
Okay, all right. Um, thank you for the question, Sawha. Um, but as far as I understand, so meaning that you are a working parents and you're juggling between your work and also to assist your kids with PDPR, macam tu kan? Um, it's actually uh, can be kids or for their younger brothers and sisters. Ah, okay. All right. Okay. Now, this is a very popular question being asked by our clients also. Uh, because first of all, they mentioned that um, some of them are preferred are prefer preferring to stay in Mahalla because they said that they couldn't focus when they are at home. You know. Because all the elders of the family, they have to take care of their kids. Okay. Walaupun dah tulis dah dekat depan pintu kan, dah siap beli whiteboard, kata, class. Okay, pukul 10 sampai pukul 11, 20, class. Pukul 2 sampai pukul 3, 20, class. Tapi still, ada orang ketuk, tiba-tiba mak suruh sidai baju, tiba-tiba, alah tolong sekejap potong, potong ayam ni. You know, that kind of distractions. Okay, I do understand that. Yes, uh, me, myself and other colleagues as well are also, you know, uh, still adjusting ourselves. Even though it has been one year and a half, it also, it all, almost two years since the the COVID-19, the KP, so semua ni kan. Our routine is still not the same as previously. Okay, we do understand that. But you have to identify what are the things that you can control and what are the things that you couldn't control. Okay, say for example, your mom, your other siblings, your work, okay, additional or part-time work, those are something that you cannot control over. Okay, meaning that you tak boleh nak control boss bagi kerja bila, tak. You tak boleh nak control mak, mak memang jangan kacau, tak boleh. Okay, so the things that you can do is focus on yourself. Okay, now, I always... Um, apa? Remind myself that I have my own limitation. I am not a robot. I am a human being, meaning that I have my own time and I need an energy. Okay, at time I feel that my battery is low. Ah, uh, battery body lah, kirinya kan. Orang kata analoginya. Kita pun nak kena recharge juga. Kita pun nak kena cucuk battery juga. You know. So you have to identify what are the things that can recharge your energy. Okay, so for me myself, I just want to have a 10 minutes break. That's all. Okay, dalam 10 minutes tu memang tak buat apa-apa. Memang tak fikir apa-apa, tak buat apa-apa, memang duduk diam-diam. Orang kata macam meditate. You know, that kind of thing. Contoh, kalau you are after perform prayers, okay, just take about 5 minutes just to focus on yourself. Itu je. Waktu tu dah nak recharge battery. Okay. Now, the next one is focus on the quality, not quantity. Okay, say for example, you have two hour session of class. Okay, I believe that you can focus 15 minutes dengan 15 awal je. Uh, uh, sorry, 15 minutes awal dengan 15 minutes akhir je. Okay, yang sejam setengah lain tu memang dah, oh nak makan apa lah ni lah, you know that kind of distractions. Okay. That case is you are focusing on the quality, quantity. Berapa lama jam dalam kelas? Okay, so maybe what you can do is that after the end of the session, after the end of the lesson, jot down apa yang you dapat dulu. Okay, jangan nak fikir semua benda, alamak, semua topik, sub-topik, semua, semua tu tak, tak. Focus on apa yang you belajar hari tu, apa yang you dapat sahaja. And then, baru you tengok the whole thing balik. So that is mean by quantity, quality, sorry, quality, quality over quantity, okay? Say for example, 10 minutes of studying would be better than one hour of studying. Uh, okay, kadang-kadang slow minute tu betul-betul you focus, okay? Don't force yourself, don't force yourself too much. Kalau tak boleh, jangan buat, dah, stop, buat benda lain which doesn't need your thinking ke, you tak, tak perlu fikir ke apa, tak apa. Do physical activities ke, you rasa nak tengok uh, apa, sambung Korea, cerita Korea ke, nak sambung tengok squid game ke, apa, buat. Tak ada masalah. Tapi don't feel guilty. 
Ha, itu itu key ni. Jangan rasa bersalah. Kalau you rasa bersalah, pertama you tak enjoy tengok movie tu. And second one is you tak dapat fokus pun apa you belajar. Ha, so dua-dua kira lose lah kat situ dua-dua. Ha, so it is not good for yourself. So the answer is focus on yourself. Okay, focus on the things that you can control. The things that you couldn't control, don't force yourself too much to change other people because you never will. Okay, so it is ideas. I hope I answer your question. Uh, yes, yes, Dr. Uh, so what I can conclude is that um, we always need to focus on ourselves focus on quality and quantity. I actually always do that mistake. I always say mm -hmm. that I need to um, study for these two hours. And I think uh, that is right. I will only study for 30 minutes and the one and a half hour, I was just thinking of other things. <laughs> so I will not do that. Uh, I think one thing that I've uh, learned from what you have talked about just now is that consistency. Uh, after classes, we need to jot down what we have learned. And if we jot down every time, consistent every day, it will actually make our life easier. So thank you so much, Sister Ma'adila. Okay, so I want to get back to Sister Shabana. Okay, so Sister Shabana, can you explain more on how can we reduce the extreme level of financial stress, like global level of financial crisis as an ex but on Islamic finance, how Islam's way of teaching can help to reduce financial stress in global level? Okay, all right. Thank you, uh, Sister. Jatuh uh, laptop. <laughs> okay. Anyway, okay. Back to your question. Okay. Basically, as we know, yeah, uh, financial stress is caused because of the fact that we do not know how to handle our money properly, right? So that because of the fact that we do not know how to handle our money properly, we ended up being in debts. We ended up uh, overspending. We ended up not saving. Right? All this is because of the fact that we are not knowledgeable in how to handle our money. So for me, it's always very important to look back at how Islam teaches us in handling money. And this has been written in the Quran already. Okay, why do I say it has been written in the Quran? If we were to look back, right? the story of Prophet Yusuf. Uh, this is a very, uh, okay, there are three points that I want to tackle here. First is let us discuss about the story of Prophet Yusuf, how the story actually taught us that savings is very important so that when we are in difficult times, we have sufficient amount of money for ourselves, number one. Number two is uh, how does uh, Islam uh, promote okay, the concept of moderation? Okay, our tawazul. Islam promotes that. And number three, I also want to discuss, if we have time, the proper understanding of tawakal, which many Muslims misunderstand the real meaning of tawakal. All right. So back to the story of Prophet Yusuf. Okay, what is it that we can learn uh, from the story of Nabi Yusuf when it comes to finances? Okay, during the time of Prophet Yusuf, right, when he was in jail, he was being jailed, right, uh, there was this period of, of his life when he was being jailed because of the fact that, uh, you know, uh, the women uh, uh, liked him and stuff like that, so he was being jailed for that. And, okay, during that time, the king of Egypt received a dream, all right, and the king of Egypt received a dream which terrified him. And the dream was about, okay, the dream that he received is uh, he had a dream of seven fat cows, uh, lembu yang gemuk, being eaten by seven skinny ones. Okay, and seven years of corn being replaced with the shriveled ones. So during that time, the king of Egypt, he used to have a few people around him who will interpret his dream. Okay, so at that time, what the king did was he had a dream and that dream really tried, terrified him. So he went to these people and asked them, to the dream interpreters, and asked these people to interpret his dream. But unfortunately, no one can interpret his dreams for him. So then there's this one man who suggested to the king, he said there's this another man 
who's in jail right now by the name of Yusuf. And he is supposedly very good in interpreting dreams. Okay, so then the king uh, went to Yusuf, Nabi Yusuf, and asked him about this dream that he had. So what did uh, Nabi Yusuf say? He said that this means that the king, is the country of Egypt, is going to suffer seven years of famine. All right. Uh, and before that seven years of famine, the, the, the king, the country of Egypt will be experiencing seven years of abundance, of prosperity. So seven years of pro prosperity followed by seven years of famine. So what he suggested in economics, uh, mostly uh, most of you are from fully out of economics, right? So uh, what he suggested is this economic term, uh, counter cyclical principle. Okay, that is to overcome the famine of seven years by saving. Okay, so that okay, do, okay, what, what, what he suggested is during the seven years of abundance of prosperity, you save. You save as much as you can. So during the time of famine, you won't be in so much trouble. You have enough savings. Same like what we are experiencing now with the pandemic, right? If before the pandemic, when the economy was good, when the economy was prosperous, we should have saved. Right? We should have emergency funds during that time. Whatever bonuses that we have, we kept aside. If the pandemic comes, when the pandemic comes now, if we are suffering uh, retrenchments, okay, or uh, we are suffering from a reduce in salary, we will not be facing so much stress because we have saved. So teaching of saving during the times of good so that during the times of bad, we have enough for ourselves have been taught in the Quran have been taught by the story of Nabi Yusuf. Why do we need to look at all kinds of books to understand these things have already been taught to us in the Quran. And because of what Nabi Yusuf advised the king, at that time, Egypt was prosperous. Egypt became such a, a very prosperous country that all the neighboring countries look up to Egypt at that time. And because the king was so happy by Nabi Yusuf, he actually appointed Nabi Yusuf to be his economic advisor. So you see, these things have already been discussed. Back to basic, you save. Whatever you have, you save. So in difficult, in difficult times, you have enough money. Okay, that's number one. Number two, if we look at Islam. Okay, Islam promotes uh, the concept of moderation. Okay, moderation is very important. Everything should be done in moderation. Nothing should be extreme. You, janganlah kita save sampai nanti orang panggil kita haji bakil, you know, kena kot. We also don't want to be kena kot. We also don't want to be pemboros. You see, we want to be someone who lives life in moderation. Okay, moderation is key. Everything that we do, it has to be in moderation. Even then also, these things have been this also have been discussed by the prophet. Okay, there was this one time when uh, this uh, this uh, sahabas they went to the prophet, and they said to the prophet, "This is one of the sahaba who go to the prophet and say to the prophet, he doesn't want to get married." Say, "I don't want to get married, ya Rasulullah. I don't want to get married." So I want to pray to. Uh, I just want to give myself hundred percent to ibadah. Okay, and then there's another one who says that I want to fast every day. Okay, I just want to fast every day. I don't want to live a day without fasting. Okay, and then there's another one who says to the prophet, uh, I just want to pray from morning to night. Okay, I just want to pray. I don't want to do anything else. Then Rasulullah said, no, you can't do all of this because you know why? You have to live life in moderation. Okay, you have responsibilities to fulfill in this world and you have to fulfill them accordingly. For example, if you are a daughter, you have to fulfill your role as a daughter. You have to fulfill your role as a sister. You have to fulfill your role as a friend. You have all kinds of responsibilities that you cannot just forget everything and focus with ibadah. You can't do that. Everything has to be in moderation. Okay, that's number two. Islam is sangat menitik beratkan the concept of tawazun or moderation. Okay, everything basic. That's why everything all goes back to basic. Okay, you do things moderate, you save whatever you have, you reduce your, your spending. Inshallah, your life will be. You don't have to like look at all these uh, difficult financial terms, you know, or difficult financial economic terms. You don't have to do that. Just go back to basic. Everything all is back to basic, and you know you will be able to solve your problem. And number three is sometimes I understand. I I I feel that the Muslims they have a very wrong understanding of tawakal. Okay, many people, if you ask them, uh, do you have uh, takaful, you know? Oh, no, I tawakal to Allah. You know, uh, do you have, uh, do you, uh, why do you spend so much? You know, why are you having such a lavish lifestyle? Oh, never mind, rezeki tangan Allah, you know, we tawakal to Allah. 
Okay, that is not the way. Okay, so back to the very famous hadith on the camel, right? Like tie your camel. And there was this Arab Bedouin, right, who went to the prophet and said to the prophet that you know he's got a camel and he wants to leave his camel. So the prophet said, why don't you tie your camel? He said, oh no, I leave it to Allah. So the prophet said, you tie your camel, then you leave to Allah. You know, same. Whatever that we do, also we must have. They have this concept where you have to doa. After you doa, you must usha. Okay, then after that you ikhtiar. Then you tawakal. You don't just tawakal everything. You know, just not, you know, not senang. Oh, I tawakal to Allah. Whatever problems you're having, oh, I tawakal to Allah. That is not the way. If, and, and again, go back to basic. Look at the life of the Prophet Muhammad himself. He is the most loved by Allah. Right? Prophet Muhammad is the most loved by Allah. He doesn't have to do anything. He just tawakal to Allah. He doesn't have to fight for Islam. He doesn't have to go to Madinah to promote Islam. He doesn't have to do anything. He just tawakal. You know, Allah will be there for him. But why did he do all of that? It's because of the fact that he believes in his effort. So it's the same with us. We must work hard. We must say. We must do everything we can. Then after that, we tawakal. So these are the three things. For me, if we go back to Islam, we look very basic. Look at the story of Nabi Yusuf. Look at the concept of moderation in Islam. And find the real understanding of tawakal. Then inshallah, you won't have big financial issues because all have been addressed by all these three points that I discussed. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sister Shavana. So, um, I, I actually didn't hear the last part because my internet connection on that that time but what i can i heard and what i can conclude is that um i didn't know about this actually that uh, there's already a story about uh, handling financial um in quran where uh, it's in the story of prophet yusuf to interpret the dream and because the king was so impressed by him he made him the economic advisor and secondly you have also said about the moderation that um, it's good to ibadah. It's also good to practice uh, our lives, and it's nothing bad about it. So thank you for that. And the third one is the wakal. Uh, okay, so I will get to Sister Adila. It's actually a common question, uh, like Sister Shavana. It's just that I want to get the psychological perspective now. In which the, the long question would be that a piece of advice you can give for students when they are about to lose faith in themselves, when they felt no one else can help them out from this financial stress. Sorry, what was the Sorry. Okay, sorry. A piece of advice you can give for students when they are about to lose their faith in themselves. Uh, when they felt no one else can help them out from this financial stress. So oh, what, what they have to do? Yeah. Okay, again and again, like I mentioned before, and this, the answer were also similar to Sister Shabana's uh, answer just now. Okay, uh, when you feel that you already planned out everything for yourself, Meaning that you, after you graduated, you already visualize, oh, okay, I nak kerja dekat government sector, oh, okay, nanti aku nak beli kereta, nanti aku nak beli ni. That kind of visualization is very good for you as a motivation for you to move forward. Okay, but don't take it as the thing that you must have. Meaning that, oh, kalau aku tak dapat, I am a loser. So you are being unjust to yourself. Okay, so that will affect again self-esteem of yourself. Okay, now when you think that there's no one can help you out, can pull you out from this economic crisis, it has to go back to yourself. Okay, you have to look at okay, how is your lifestyle. Okay, don't depend uh, to other people to help you. Sebab benda tu takkan jadi. You know, dia takkan jadi. Okay, so look back at your strategy. Okay, do some kind of reflection. Okay, go back to the your preferred company just now. Okay, bila you kata macam tadi you nak pergi ke government sector, but then you couldn't secure any job, uh, a pay placement there, and then you are unemployed. Okay, so yang tu, 
memang bergantung kepada you punya preference sendirilah. It depends on your preference. It is not about other people. You cannot blame other people. Ah, orang tu boleh dapat kerja disebabkan oleh kabel tu. You know, that kind of perception. Uh, yes, that is one of the reality. Uh, okay, tapi benda tu akan buatkan you rasa lagi macam down. Okay, so look at but your strategy. Okay, now, is it a good thing for me to go for government sector? And I look for the other opportunities. What are the skills needed for me to improve myself so that I'll be competitive as other people? Okay, contoh lah kan. Kalau you nak secure in one um, career, you could think of what are the requirements. Okay, like Sister Shabana has mentioned before, upskill yourself with all available courses online or online available out there. Okay, ada Coursera, ada LinkedIn Learning, ada Udemy, macam-macam courses yang ada kat sana. Improve yourself so that you can increase your market. Ha, your market value tu. So, dia bukanlah bergantung kepada orang, you know. So, it depends on yourself. Macam mana you nak improve yourself untuk dapatkan benda yang lagi bagus. Okay, so that would be my answer untuk uh, to your question lah. Never depend on other people because... Tak semua orang akan ada waktu kita susah. Okay, so do some kind of reflection. Look at back, look back at your plan and what are the things that orang kata if you do the same thing over and over again, you will end up get the same result. So you can try and out cari benda lain lah so that you will get different result for that. Okay. Um. Okay. So what I want to ask. Uh, just to add it up, your answer is that when we do self reflection, um, mm -hmm. and then we try to, um, improve our financial condition, it will be a very long term solution. Am I right? So, um, what if that student is in emergency? You know that he, uh, he has nowhere to go. So at that time, what? He, Uh, what she has to do. Oh, maksudnya macam sekarang tengah study tapi nak makan untuk esok pun tak ada. Macam tu ke? Itu ke soalan dia? Ah, yes, yes. Okay, if you're a student, uh, we have a welfare unit in RIUM. Okay, uh, welfare unit is in charge of your wellness lah. Kalau student yang tak ada financial aid dan sebagainya, they will channel you to um, relevant offices. Ha, tak ada masalah yang tu. Tapi um, that one is the short term punya lah. But it will occur again and again. Ha, so it will create dependency to other people. So me myself, I strongly believe that it is not a good, uh, apa orang kata, a good habit for you to continue doing it, to rely on other people, okay? So meaning that if you're a student, go seek for help for, from the welfare unit, okay? But you have to do and you have to have your own initiatives, okay, to avoid that thing to happen again in the future. Uh, so that, that I hope I answer your questions lah. Itu yang akak faham. Tapi again, okay, for example, kalau you all idea macam contoh pinjaman PTPTN, okay, boleh guna konsep, the similar concept that Sister Shabana has already mentioned to you. So at least if you can, you, if you can accept, save up until 30%, at least 10% should be okay for every month. That is for your emergency. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Madila. Okay, so now I will straight away go to the last question uh, for both of you. So what is your personal advice, um, your last personal advice to those who are experiencing financial stress? Can you elaborate it before uh, we move on to the Q&A? Uh, starting from you, Sita Shavana. Okay, uh, for me, uh, when we are talking about students, right? Uh, so students are still very young. Okay, you still have got a long way to go in your life, right? And having ups and downs in life is a common thing. But the key is to be able to always push yourself up when you are having the down. 
that is key okay never fall into the trap of uh, uh, you know not able to push up yourself again after you have uh, fallen down that's very important okay and as students like i said Alhamdulillah, you know, now I'm already almost 40, my badan pun dah sakit-sakit, you know. As students, you are still very healthy, you are still very young, so you work hard, you know, you work hard, you study hard, okay, and now your, your role is to study, give your best, okay, you study hard, you give your best, because your results is key in finding you a good job when you graduate. So your role now is to really study as much as you can, and to, uh, you know, if to work hard as much as you can. So nanti, inshallah, you know, when you graduate, you have good results, good jobs will come to you. Okay, number one. Number two, if you have the extra money, okay, to all the students out there, my advice is please buy yourself takaful. Okay, takaful for your retirement, takaful for your, you know, uh, health, you know, health takaful plans, accident takaful plans, emergency, emergency takaful plans. There are so many types of plans that's available for youth, okay, for the young ones like all of you. Like I've said before, when you are young, when you have no sickness, when you are still uh, very healthy, the premium that you have to pay for takaful is very low. So then this is the premium that you will pay for all your life. So you, you want to capture that low premium first. So you start buying all these plans when you are still young. Okay, and uh, very important to always adopt a mindset that I will only live within my means. I will work hard. I will work hard. I will study hard. I will work hard. I want to earn as much money as I can. But I will only live within my means. And use that 30-10 plan that I have discussed. And it's very important. Always remember whatever risky that you have, there are also risky that belongs to other people that you need to help out. Because when Allah gives you risk, it's because Allah is also testing you to see how you use your risk. It's only not for yourself, but to help those in need. Because you also want to attain that barakah in your risk. Okay, that's very important. And uh, for me, uh, for students, uh, when you graduate, okay, start saving. Whatever you can save, you save. Target, okay, up to a certain age, I want to have my own property. Okay, you want to have your own property. Target that. You want to have your own property. You start planning for your retirement. Okay, I want to retire by this age. So how much should I have by this age? Because finance, like I said, if you fail to plan, that means you plan to fail. Everything in life crucial is planning. Okay, proper planning is very important. So you plan because you all are still very young. You still have got a long way to go. You decide your future. Whether you want to have a bright future or you want to have a bleak one. So you decide. So you make that change. You plan for yourself. Okay, I want to have this property at this age. Okay, I want to have this. Uh, I want to make sure when I retire, I have this amount. Then you set target. Okay, by this age, I want to have financial freedom. What do you mean by financial freedom? Financial freedom means that you know at that age you no longer have debts. Okay, you no longer have to worry about you know having to pay this amount of money every month. You know you don't have to worry about all that. You have no more debts. Okay. So it's a goal that everyone should also hope to achieve. Financial freedom is a goal that everybody hope to, should hope to achieve because you don't want to live your life forever having to pay debts. Okay, because financial stress is a very big problem, you know. Every day you think about, oh, how to pay this, how to pay that, you know. I have to live life like this. I have to have these debts to pay. It's very stressful. So you don't want to have that kind of life. So you want to have a life that's peaceful. You know, you are in control of your life. So it's very important for you to put a goal in your life that this age I want to achieve financial freedom, then you work towards it. Okay, and my advice is to all the students out there, do not be a part of this vicious cycle of wanting to you know, show off, wanting to be this Insta famous or you know, whatever. Like, you know, it's okay to be Insta famous if you are making money for yourself. It's okay. You know, if you are making money from it for yourself, it's okay. It's a good thing. But if you are just following people and ended up having to be the one that bear all this brunt of you know, uh, being in debt, like uh, high credit card payments, high personal financing loans, no, you should not be trapped in that cycle. Okay, you should not be uh, always looking at, you know, sometimes this, uh, for me, uh, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, all these things, you see what good things you can offer, what, uh, all these things, they are bagus, there are many good things in there, in there, you know, how you can make money from it, all these things are good, but if you use it in a negative way, then it will end up, ended up being something that's not good. Okay, so it's very important for you to see how you can actually take good things from it and benefit from it. 
Because now everywhere put is social media, right? So it's, you can't run away from it. But you must think how to actually get something good out of it. Okay, not something bad out of it. And again, it's very important for all of us to cultivate the behavior of saving. Okay, it's very important to save. Okay, it's very important to find out uh, how to do investments. Okay, all these things, I know it's very important to save, very important to do uh, investments, and very important to find ways how to increase your money. So all again, finally, back to ourselves, what we want in our life and how we want to take control of our life. And we don't want to be someone who is living in debts, who is having financial stress. We want to be someone who is positive with our finances. And again, like I said back to the religion, the religion, the religion also even in the Quran has taught us that saving is very important. Saving is key. Live in moderation. Never live uh, excessively. And also understand the real concept of tawakkal. So to all students out there, you still have got a long way to go in your life. Okay, you make that positive change. You decide what you want in your life and you start from today. Tell yourself, I want to be in control of my finances and inshallah, I want to be someone who is not in debt. I will be someone who will be achieving financial freedom and someone who do not have to worry about paying debts one day. Inshallah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Sister Shavana. So um, it's very interesting that you have taught us about the 3010 formula and then you have taught us about uh, how do we have to always uh, focus on our investments and then savings if we have extra money. And it's, it's good that if uh, Instagram can be a good place if we are getting a benefit from them, but if it's only for showing off, um, it's not that good. So thank you so much, Sister Shavana. Now I will go to Sister Adila. Okay, so Sister Adila, is any is there any last your last piece of advice for students about financial stress? Okay, um, I think it is not the last one. It's few things. Okay, I I just want to add something based on your previous question. Okay, now, um, when we are students. We don't have anything to sell, betul tak? Kita tak ada benda untuk kita jual untuk kita dapat income. But the thing that you can do is you can sell your skills. Okay, the things that we always encourage our students to do is go freelancing. Okay, Google, try cari free, tengoklah cari kat freelancer.com ke, okay, dekat mau kerja ke, dekat digital, uh, kerja digital ke, dekat uh, artwork, you know, explore those opportunities. Say for example, okay, siapa kat sini tahu nak convert daripada words ke PDF? Siapa tahu kat sini? Semua orang tahu, betul tak? Okay, siapa tak tahu tahu ke tak tahu lah kenapa tak tahu. <laughs> okay, so as simple as that kind of services, ada company yang memulakan orang untuk ubah daripada Microsoft to PDF, PDF, sorry, PDF, okay. Busuk-busuk pun dapat mungkin satu dokumen lima ringgit. So that's how you make money. Okay, that's orang kata the skills that you know. Okay, other than that, say for example, you can uh, do some teaching, kan. Say for example, Saha ambil accounting ke, apa ke kan. You ambil classes for mathematics untuk anak tahun satu ke, you know, a simple mathematic, tak ada masalah, tak perlu nak ada advance level ke, tak ada masalah. And nowadays, please believe me, parents do not have um, ample time untuk tengok betul-betul anak-anak dia punya homework. So this is the best time for you to, you know, grab this opportunity, be a tutor. Online tutor pun tak ada masalah. Parents are willing to pay, believe me. Okay, so I don't fikir, ah, do it ada. Tapi masa dengan anak tak ada, <laughs> you know? So they can pay for your services. So please, my dear students, my dear adik-adik uh, semua, explore freelancing jobs. Okay, this is very good for you. And it's very good for you to set up, to design your portfolio before you are ready for a real working world out there. Okay, that's very important. So itu pun boleh membantulah dari segi you punya financial uh, pocket. 
Okay. Next one. I really, really agree with Sister Shabana. Investment is very important. Okay. For your information, yelah kita tebak, kita, bila kita cakap pasal inflation lah, apa semua tu, I'm not the, the right person to talk about it. Tapi, contoh eh, um, my parents used to encourage us to, contoh lah, dah dapat duit raya kan, tak tahun kan. Okay. Dia akan kata, jangan guna duit tu masuk dalam tabung. So what my parents did was tabung tu diorang masuk dalam ASB. Sampai dah umur 20 tahun, kita tiba-tiba tengok bank, wow. Oh, okey aku ada duit banyak ni. Kita tak nampak. Kita tak tahu. Kita tak tahu sekarang. So sikit-sikit hari ni tak ada masalah untuk kita dapatkan benda tu later. It is a long term punya investment. Okey tak kisahlah nak masuk ASB ke even takafu for apa-apa tak ada masalah. At least ini orang kata fast saving. Ha, dia tak hangus macam sister Syabana cakap awal tadi. Okay, contoh duit tu saya guna untuk kahwin. Ha, you know, that kind of uh, orang kata is very helpful for me untuk long term punya. Okay, that's number two investment. Yang ketiga adalah you have to know your strength. Okay, before you go for 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 job market. Okay, those who are taking accounting Nowadays, maybe, maybe four years later, the demand will be lesser. Kalau you all tengok World Economic Forum, okay, akan berkurangan accountants. You know, demands for accountants. But, but jangan rasa macam, alamak, akak habis apa saya nak kena buat ni? Ha, you know, improve yourself with technologies. Say for example, be expert in Excel, be expert in SAP system. So benda tu akan buat you jadi marketable. So bila you marketable, memudahkanlah untuk you dapat pekerjaan yang lebih bagus, mengurangkan possibility you akan ada economic crisis. Uh, as simple as that analogy lah, kira ni. Okay, so focus on strength, know what you want. Okay. Start doing now. I mean macam tak perlu tunggu nak habis belajar. Sekarang pun kalau you nak terima any freelance job, please do so. Okay. Alright. That's all. So that's, I think that is like three pieces of advice from you. That first of all, we need to use our abilities um, so that we can be financially independent. For uh, Like me, I'm taking accounting. Obviously, I know how to teach maths for standard three or standard four students, so I can do it now. Secondly, savings. Uh, now we can't see if even we give like five ringgit, five ringgit, five ringgit every day or one ringgit every day. After years, it will be a lot, and people people understand that, but people don't acknowledge that, and people should start acknowledging that. And thirdly. Uh, yes, that is true. Uh, we need to, in this era, we need to focus more on the technology so that we can be more marketable. So thank you so much, Sutano Adila, for that. Okay, so now, um, okay, now we have come to the last slot with our speakers, which is the Q&A session. So I'm opening the floor to anyone who would like to ask any questions, uh, please write down your question uh, at the chat box and I will deliver it to the speakers. Okay, one more thing, uh, Sister Sauha, like uh, I think I've mentioned to you before, uh, for all the students, okay, if you want to know any uh, financial tips, okay, and how to handle your finances, right, you can all follow my Instagram.
Okay, my Instagram is shabana999. And usually from my Instagram, I always give uh, tips on how we can actually handle our finances uh, in, a, in a positive way, inshallah. All right. Okay, my Instagram is shabana999. Thank okay, you. Okay, uh, I think I will write your Instagram at here. Okay, thank you, Shavika. So, okay, so anyone who has question? Um, hello, Sankom. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Okay, so I'm from the committee. So we have gathered a few questions to be asked here. Uh, the first one, maybe I can uh, tujukan ke Sister Noor Adila. Uh, as we can see, like due to this pandemic, kan dah jadi, everything has become into online session, right? So we can see that, of course, we do have a therapy for online session, right? Is it effective uh, if we compare it with having it face-to-face? -face? Do you want... A transparent answer ataupun a nice to share answer. <laughs> uh, I think both pun boleh kot. <laughs> okay, alright. So for your information, yes, it will affect somehow the effectiveness of the counseling session. Okay, it will not be similar as face-to-face -face session. Okay, so Alhamdulillah, um, if I'm not mistaken, starting next week, we're going to allow um, students in campus to walk in and have a face-to-face -face session with us. Uh, tapi akan ada SOP lah. Uh, tak ada masalah. Because I believe that those who are uh, going back to the campus, you have to complete your doses kan? Uh, I mean, um, apa ni, vaccine dose kan? Uh, so I think that that is one uh, of the SOP. So talking about online session, um, yes, it is there are limitations for online session. First one is usually we will encourage students to do written chatting. Okay, contoh lah kan, akak pun bagi salam. Assalamualaikum Sauha. After five minutes later, Sauha pun akan cakap, Waalaikumsalam Kak. Another five minutes later, how are you? Another five minutes later, so how I can get Oh, I'm doing fine. You know, for 20 minutes, just to ask, how are you? Bagi salam. You know, tapi session sejam je. Uh, so, um, internet connection, nak kena tengok juga, you know. Uh, dari segi orang kata, in counseling session, we have to know and we have to observe our clients' non-verbal actions as well. Kan, kita kena tengok. So there is there are some limitations there. So kadang-kadang kalau kita rasa macam uh, tak berjalan lah session ni, so we will up or we will suggest to our clients to do a video call. Video call is better. Uh, tapi kena tengok juga. Okay, kadang-kadang voice call. So terpulang kepada clients lah. So sekarang alhamdulillah we will do it hybrid. Meaning that for those who are still not in campus, we can still do counseling session online. Uh, tapi kalau yang dah ada dalam campus, boleh datang to, to our offices. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, and I have another question. Maybe this question uh, boleh tuju kepada Sister Shabana. Um, is it like, uh, dekat sini dia, dia cakap, can be can being economically disadvantaged, macam for example, lower group uh, income, B40, lead to mental health issue, especially in an economic downturn? Is it this, uh, during this downturn, only uh, orang yang lower income je akan affected? Okay, thank you very much for the question. Okay, I think uh, it's not fair for us to just have a blanket uh, understanding that only the lower incomes are affected because actually uh, everybody is affected by the pandemic, right? So I think the key here is how we can actually um, bring ourselves up again when we are facing with this pandemic. Like I've said earlier, first of all, you know, if we are going through this pandemic, what do we have to do? 
in regard to finances, first, uh, we have to relook again at our lifestyle, okay, how we've been living our life before this, right? Like uh, even like in the story of the Prophet Yusuf, like I've mentioned before, it's very important for us to, uh, like uh, during the times of Prophet Yusuf, right? When, you know, uh, the, 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 the king had this dream about seven years of famine. And then after that, uh, before the seven years of famine, you have this seven years of abundance. So again, so same thing also, we must learn to save. Okay, saving is something that we have to adopt in our lifestyle. Saving is very important. So again, uh, back to the question, I don't think uh, it's fair for us to say that only the B40 is facing with these challenges. The challenges are being faced by almost everyone, but how to address it, how to overcome is key in uh, ensuring that inshallah, we will be able to be a better person after that. But before that, I think we have got another question here in the chat box, which says how to boost our confidence and be charismatic like our speaker, Noor Adila. So basically, the question is how to boost our confidence and be charismatic like our speakers. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for the students, okay, uh, I like, well, I'm very happy to hear that you, you see us as charismatic speakers, because actually, I've got a big problem, okay, I am very nervous when I speak, okay, I always have got these nervous issues, so to all the students out there, okay, how to be a charismatic speaker, the key is to always uh, accept what are your weaknesses like in my case my weakness is nervous I'm always nervous before I speak so you must find ways how to address that okay how to address it is first through practice you have to consistently practice okay practice how to speak in front of the mirror practice how to speak with your friends you know because practicing can help you to overcome that fear okay number two is whatever that you want to speak on it's very important for you to do research first on the subject you speak because when you know the subject matter that will uh, automatically build your confidence as well so like you see when uh, Nur, uh, sister Nur Adila speaks on psychology she's very confident because that is her area of expertise so it's very important to first practice uh, okay first address your weaknesses practice and then to do your research well before you start speaking inshallah you will build, build that confidence and be the charismatic speaker that you hope to be Um, sorry, can I can I add a few things uh, regarding the the questions being asked by Hafiq just now? Sure. Okay, for your information, um, the thing that I already I shared with you guys is majority come from B40, not all. Okay, not to or in character, uh, put a conclusion that they are having financial crisis. Okay, for your information, T20 ni pun ada financial crisis dia sebab Jangan ni ada komitmen yang tinggi. Ha, bila gaji dah tinggi, waktu tu lah beli ni, beli rumah, beli aset, you know, komitmen tu makin tinggi. So, bila kadang-kadang um, dia punya source of income tu terganggu, so same goes with their commitments. Ha, itu pun sebenarnya akan membuatkan orang akan rasa, you know, affected in terms of their mental health condition. Okay, alright. Uh, so, to answer, um, siapa tadi, sorry, uh, Isma's question. Uh, same goes with Sister Shabana. I will get nervous <laughs> sebelum nak start tu macam Ooh, macam mana ni? So I always ask my husband, my husband uh, tolong doakan ni, tolong doakan semoga semua okey je Dia kata alah, never mind lah, you be doing okay lah You know that kind of thing Nervous is very good for you to prepare yourself uh, Macam Sister Shabana cakap Kalau you tak nervous, contohlah you are nak buat presentation kan You don't feel any nervous at all so sometimes you cannot expect the worst case could happen. Uh, so bila kita tak prepare, kita tak, tak tahu nak react macam mana. Okay, so that's number one lah. Maksudnya nervous is good, but it's a matter of how you control yourself. Second one is that, kita kena fikir balik kenapa kita nervous. Okay, why? Because I always think about other people's perceptions on me. Alamak, nanti kalau aku cakap macam ni, orang cakap apa eh? Uh, nanti kalau macam aku cakap macam ni, nanti mesti orang fikir kita macam ni. Uh, so, the, the the thing that I always keep in my mind is that, um, apa orang kata, you never please other people. Uh, so, just be yourself. You are, you have the intention to share with other people. 
uh, not to teach other people. Uh, so itulah, it, that, that's the thing that I always keep in mind lah. Uh, kita nak share je. Bukan kita nak mengajar, bukan berka- berkaitan salah dengan betul. And me myself, uh, to be frank with you, I learned a lot from Sister Shabana. Okay, I baru tahu yang yang pesan-pesan tu, you know, how how to manage your your account, you know, how to manage your spend uh, spending, so semua tu kan. So baru tahu, selama ni macam apa orang kata, ala ada tu, ada tu tawakal. <laughs> you know that kind of thing lah. Tawakal tu ada tu, nanti adalah rezeki Allah bagi. Uh, tak boleh lah, tak boleh guna macam tu dah. Dah tak boleh guna kansa yang sama. So itulah, itu juga from me. Thank you Syabana, thank you. Alright, thank you, Sister Shivana and Sister Adila. Um, so, uh, I will ask again, is there any question? Okay, so... Okay, so there is one question from Nora Yasmin. How do, I, how do I learn to forgive people who have hurt me so bad? I just cannot forget about it. Okay, so I think I will forward this question to Sister Nora Adila first. This is a tough question uh, because it can happen to anyone. Okay. Um, first of all, what the things that I have to identify is the level of the uh, the traumatic event. Uh, contohlah, kalau orang ni disakiti sampai trauma, okay, sampai trauma, contohlah kan, um, dia dah, dah in relationship with this guy, tapi this guy ni ada apa ke so will create another trust issue so it could be a traumatizing event for that person okay so this person has the tendency to generalize the same situation to other people as well uh, so nak kena identify juga lah whether it is traumatic ataupun tidak okay kalau tak first you have to do is you have to validate what you feel okay so yes i really angry this person. So you acknowledge dulu, you kena you kena rasa macam ya yeah, memang aku marah gila, aku geram gila benda ni, kenapa lah boleh buat begini dekat aku macam tu. First you have to acknowledge don't suppress, don't repress because dia akan jadi macam mana kalau kita pendam pendam-pendam dia akan jadi kat dalam, dia akan jadi keras. So dia akan jadi benda, apa orang kata um, apa yang orang kata tak ingat perkataan tu maksudnya benda eksternal yang ada dalam badan kita yang kita susah nak buang kalau dia dah keras, kalau dia dah hitam okay, so first acknowledge what you feel kalau you marah, you marah, tak ada masalah don't feel guilty of being angry to that person okay, secondly is you have to believe that time heals okay, ambil lah masa banyak mana pun you nak ambil, tak ada masalah kalau you tanya saya, berapa lama untuk kita move on It depends on individuals. We don't have a specific period of time. Okay? Tak ada rasa macam, oh lima tahun ambil masa, ambil lah sebanyak mana masa. But at the end of the day, you will I, you will realize that it is not worth it of having that kind of anger to that person. Okay? Dia ibarat macam kita pegang tali lama-lama, tangan kita akan berdarah. Tapi kalau kita lepaskan benda tu, It's easier said than, uh, than done, tapi boleh practice, slowly, take your time, tak ada masalah. So first is validate what you feel, second one is, um, apa tadi, take your time as much as I can, as you can, okay, because time kills. Second, uh, the third one is, um, apa orang kata, um, benda lama jangan dikenal, ah, macam tu lah, jangan. <laughs> okay. Alright. Um, what you have said. Um, so, Sister Shavana, have you ever experienced with this type of scenario, and how did you handle it? Sister Shavana, you ask me any questions about financial, inshallah, I can answer. But you ask me questions about love, about hurt. I don't think I'm the right person to answer because I might give you the wrong advice. Okay. <laughs> so okay. we are uh, from the expert that's Adila. Okay. 
All right, thank you. Thank you, uh, Sister Adila and Sister Shabana. Okay, so there is one more question. May I know your both opinion regarding be a flexible person, which it can encounter any problems in the upcoming era? Okay, so... Okay, um, are you saying, uh, can, can, can I start first? Okay. okay, what I mean by this question is that uh, being a flexible person, you can encounter any problem. So meaning that you are trying your best to meet other people's expectations on you, but at the end of the day, you will feel that uh, you are being used by other people. Untuk macam tak boleh say no, um, and then you you macam rasa macam ala kalau aku say no nanti orang kata aku selfish macam tu ke soalan ni? In terms of job, yeah, ni itu tu ikut ni kerana dia atas profesi which in terms of income from sebut kami. Irazali, if you are still there, can you um unmute yourself and right. can you uh, okay. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Uh, so according to uh, our situation right now, there is uh, many problems that we face. So what I'm trying to ask you guys is like, uh, to uh, uh, being a flexible person, like not uh, we can do like accounting sector, but we also can do at the other sectors. We can involved in the other sectors like something uh, like that yeah so that? so that's mean if there is a problem in the accounting sectors that we can go for the others sectors mm -hmm. but sometimes uh uh we feel that we cannot we cannot be flexible because there is so much thing that we need to to think right so because i think I prefer to to know many things in terms of jobs, knowledge. So that's uh, maybe if I have a problem in uh, specific parts in that, and then I can go for the other parts. So I can like be a flexible like that. Okay. Okay. Um, the first moment I hear your question, uh, the first word came to my mind was cross feeling. Uh, so meaning that you're you're taking accounting, but you can consider to work in other fields as well. Betul ke? Itu itu pertama yang akak faham lah. Meaning cross feeling. But the second statement that you mentioned about um, you are able to perform different jobs, but uh, but you couldn't. Yeah, so something like that. Is it do you mean by um you are not able to prioritize things? Uh lebih kurang lah macam tu aku. Uh. Uh, so maksudnya sekarang you buat beberapa kerja ke? Uh, no, but uh, I keep trying to understand the others, the other job, something like that. Just uh, like I can maybe, uh, I can dealing with persons, or I can like be accounting, or I may have a knowledge on uh, tourism, like that, uh, something like that. Multitasking, yeah, more. In, more on multitasking. Okay, now, my advice would be, uh, there's a difference between sector and industry and position. Okay, yang tu kita kena faham. Sector tu maksudnya government sector, multinational, uh, multinational I mean private sector, NGO, uh, badan berkanun dan sebagainya. Itu sector. But when we are talking about industries, it is related with banking, uh, contoh macam tourism, 
education um, ataupun entertainment okey ada banyak okey position adalah position you lah pekerjaan you so for example you are taking accounting and you want to be an accountant okey but you are interested in tourism okey meaning that i would advise for you to go for tourism industry ah uh, okey jangan pergi ke banking nanti you akan rasa macam alah sama semua berkaitan dengan banking finance related you no know? you tak akan explore lebih so yang tu kena faham lah maksudnya kalau you ada interest dalam industri yang berbeza tapi believe me industri tu memerlukan accountant juga so position you tu masih lagi ada dekat dalam industri yang berkaitan dengan itu okay itu kalau saya menjawab lah another thing that I can share with you guys is that it is better for you to explore anything okay sebab in making a decision about your career there are two things which is which are very important the first one is about information second one is about exposure Okay, even though you have so much information in your life, contohlah, tanya orang ni, orang ni cakap macam ni, tanya orang ni, cakap orang macam ni, you can just absorb those informations. But in reality, it doesn't portray that you are able to do that task. Ha, dia tak menentukan sama ada you mampu ke tak buat pekerjaan tu. So, itulah uh, terjadinya exposure. Okay, meaning that if you are being exposed to one thing, That's when you realize that, oh, rupanya aku bolehlah buat benda ni. Oh, I am able to do this. Okay, you assume that accounting is very good for you because you have high interest in that. But that doesn't mean that you will be a good accountant. Ha, tu contoh. Contoh, eh. Contoh je. So, meaning that exposure is very important. Okay, plus with enough information. So, meaning that kalau you rasa macam you nak cross field a little bit, okay, tak ada masalah. So meaning, please choose industry which is related to your interest. Uh, don't don't um per limit yourself um to explore in you know finance and banking related industries only. So I hope I answer your question. Ha. Huh. <coughs> okay. Okay, Rosavi. Uh, have you understand? Okey ke? Kalau tak okey, boleh buat appointment. Ha, promo sikit. <laughs> okey. Okey, alright. Okey, so I think I will close the Q&A session. Okey, now Now, uh, finally we have come to the end of our forum. And on behalf of Belfar MSES, I would like to thank Sister Shabana and also Sister Noor Adila for accepting our invitation and sharing all this knowledge and skills in how to cope with financial stress in economic crisis with us today. Uh, I believe that we have learned a lot of things. Um, for Sister Shabana, I will always remember the 3010 formula. Thank you so much, Sister Giovanna. And thank you so much, Sister Noadila. If, if I ever have depression, I will come to you. Okay, so thank you again to all of you. And before ending this forum, uh, I, I... One more thing, uh, is that okay? My last advice to the students, right? Because I think so when uh, Sister Nur Adila uh, mentioned about the question by uh, Razali, it triggers my mind. Okay, it's very important to all the students, right? Whatever that you want to do, follow your passion. Because your passion, okay, when you have passion on that subject, it can bring you a long way. You know, you don't mind working long hours. You don't mind putting the extra effort because you are passionate about it. You know, and then when talking about passion, right, I only realized at the age of 38, now that I love how to play badminton. You know, I, I can't be a national badminton player anymore. If only I have realized this passion many, many years ago, I might have become a badminton player for uh, my country, you see. So it's very important for us to follow our passion. Whatever you do to all the students of uh, Kulia of Economics and Management Sciences, follow your passion. Even if it means you have to change your subject, you change because you are still very young. You still have got a long way to go. Follow your passion because your passion will bring you to the real success in your life. All right? Okay, thank you. 
All right, thank you, everyone. So I, I hope everyone remembers that you always need to follow your passion. Thank you so much, Sister Shavana. And lastly, I would like to extend our, my gratitude and the welfare and trust gratitude to all the participants in making this event a success. And thank you again to both of the speakers for accepting our invitation. So now, brothers and sisters, uh, now marks the time uh, that has been awaited by many. Um, it is the time of the announcement of winners of poster competition. So 